Auction time. Yes, having an auction on Christmas Day. This is the 4V series auction. 4V01. I did this one on video. It's a Patternalis style point. As far as I know, this is the um, later period style of uh, Patternalis point with the very symmetrical, very wide and kind of bow-legged looking type stem. Okay, I tried to get it as thin as possible. This is raw chert, high grade, and I did sharpen the edges. But yeah, you can see it on video. There's a slight bump right there, but I didn't think that looked bad, so I kept it in there. I mean, I didn't try to chase it. I could have narrowed the tip down and tried to pop that little bump off of there, but it's all right. Okay. 4V02. This is a Nolan, Nolan, N-O-L-A-N style point. Again, raw Texas high grade chert. It's all on video. Now this is like the first stage before it gets resharpened. Nolans have been known to be resharpened heavily sometimes, down to little nubs. The dis distinguishing feature is the beveled sides on the stem. Yeah, they're either alternately beveled or beveled on the same side. It varies, but it's basically just made into a, a triangle and then pressure flaked to get the stem. And it's just pressure flaked in one direction. I did do some pressure flakes in the other direction just to clean it up a little bit. But most of them are in one direction. All right. And yeah, I did sharpen it up. Tried to get bold flaking on here. It's all on video. Okay. All right. Not many points this week. Uh, I also came down with something. I got a cold or something. So I stopped napping. 4V03. This is a box of, of various pieces that I picked out of my stash that had color to them. Some of them are heat treats. Like this is a heat treat Burlington. Some of them are might be raw. Yeah, so I think some of them are raw. But these are all just all unusual and colorful shirts and some obsidian in here too. All right, this is Burlington also, but it's a lower grade. This is a higher grade Burlington. This is a lower grade. This is very rough and chalky. Both of them are heat treats. This is uh, chalky and rough. Yeah, might, you might have issues with the cortex where it might show through some of these little bubble features on there might not be able to be removed anyway let's see it this is black black texas chert i don't know where this comes from but it's very interesting material it's raw uh, we got some triple flow type obsidians this one and this one are triple flow but the colors are different these are this is kind of a brown triple flow and this is more of a mahogany looking but you can see there's clear spots. And I think there's some clear spots in here too. All right. Uh, these are pieces of brown dacite. Little pieces to mess around with. I don't have any big pieces of that. This is like a tiger stripe mahogany. But it's a higher grade. A high grade mahogany type obsidian. I got a bunch of heat treats in here. I, I believe this is a heat treat. I don't know where it came from. I think this one here is a mukite heat treat or something similar, some kind of jasper. This is a jasper as well. It should be high grade, but you know, you never know. Some of these very pretty stones have cracks and stuff. I don't know what this is. It's just an interesting color. And I think I did heat treat it. it I don't know if it naps very well. I didn't test it out there is some flakes here but you never know this could be a fluke area where it's nice to nap here but it won't be nice in other areas but it looks pretty good 
Uh, yeah, I'm too busy to test these all. I didn't test them. I should have knocked some flakes off, but I didn't. Uh, this is a reddish, I think it's a Texas shirt. I think it's raw, but I might, I might be wrong. This is a Georgia Jasper. I don't know if it's heat treated. Georgia Jasper. I don't know if it's heat treated. This, these are uh, opalized something or other. It's very lightweight rock, and it naps very, very easily. It's, it's weird stuff. Okay, so I, I included it in here. Uh, this is a heat treat Jasper. Uh, a friend of mine sent me a bunch of this stuff, and I think he'll recognize it if he sees this video. I haven't had time to nap any of this, but it's just typical heat treat Jasper high grade stuff and the last piece in here I believe is a piece of Texas shirt just raw I threw it in here because it has bands of color you might be able to capture some of those when you nap it all right okay I don't know how many pieces this all this should all fit in there if it doesn't I'll just cram it in there and make sure it fits Pack it in like a jigsaw puzzle. Let's see. Four V04. This is a box of root beerish type chert. Mostly thick, but I included some thin pieces for you to mess around with. Uh, and I found the flattest ones I could. This one, it's not that great as far as a piece goes, but you can get an idea of what the translucency will be like if you get it thin. Uh, I'll throw in some other pieces. If I find some better pieces than this, I'll take this out and throw some other ones in here. Yeah, before I ship it. So yeah, they're just a bunch of flakes. Uh, there's some thin ones, like I said, for you to mess around with. Small thin ones, and then the, there's some thicker ones, slightly curved on that one. And most of these are thick, and they got plenty of meat on them, so you can, you know, drive off some relatively large flakes. What is the size? They're going to look bigger than they really are. Uh, let's see, this is three and three eighths. Because my hands are small, these pieces are going to look bigger than they are. Three and something inches. This one is uh, three and a quarter. Yeah, all the rest of these are going to have a lot of thickness to them. Well, not that one. <clears throat> this one, pretty thick. But like I said, there's plenty of meat in there. I like these because it allows me some, some room. I don't like to nap the really thin ones all that much. And this is all raw stuff. You can heat treat it, but... Uh, I don't recommend high heat. I recommend 350 or even 325 and below if you want to heat treat. If you nap this and you find that you're not able to nap it well, you can heat treat it. I would say 325 degrees or less, even down to 275 degrees. So I would start these out at 275 degrees for four hours, let it cool down, and see if it naps well. If you start to go higher than 325, I think they, it starts to break up and pot lid. And, and, uh, I don't know what it is about the root beer stuff, but it has internal issues that will crack or uh, become nasty. I don't know how to explain it, but, you know. So there you go. Just a box of this root beer type stuff. I'm digging down deep into my stash of rocks in my stashes plural to see if I can find some good flakes for you guys but I'm almost almost exhausted as far as the flakes go I, I need to get some more rock all right four v05 this is two uh, raw Georgia chert bifaces. Uh, I got a bunch of this Georgia chert from Jeff, and I bifaced these down over the week, and I picked out two of the ones that looked the clearest. 
no big holes, no big uh, pockets of chalky material or limestone, and pretty good size, six and a half by three and three eighths. Some of you guys like to nap this stuff raw, but it can be heat treated. I recommend 350, 375, but no higher than 375 on these. Okay. So yeah, clear as I could find. I did a bunch of these and I, these are two of the best ones that I have. I usually make knives and stuff out of these. Six and five eighths. Six and a half. And this is the width on this one. Three and one eighth. I did measure this one, but I didn't say. Three and three eighths. All right, so these are just blanks. You know, just by faces, not really planning on anything with those. Uh, but I usually make knives out of these. Last but not least, 4V06. It is a box of bifaces. I think there's 10 of them in here. Uh, some of them are Georgia Swirl Chert. It's a Coastal Plains type chert. And some of these are Texas. This is a Texas root beerish type. All right, so here we go. Let's see, what do we got? Yeah, these are three Texas, these are high grade chirts. These two. This is a root beer. I consider it a high grade, but you're going to get a lot of these little fingernail step fractures in there. So it's not as high grade as these two. These two nap very easily. And I believe these are like Pedernalis shirts. Okay, so I'll start measuring these. So there's three Texas, and the rest of these, I think there's seven Georgia shirt. Okay. Four and a half. Four and a half, three and a half. This one is four and three quarter. It's a high. This one's got no issues. Yeah, it's pretty good stuff. Let's see. This one is four and five eighths by three. Five and a quarter. Two and a quarter. It's got a little hole in it. This one's got some inconsistency. It's not consistent. Right? So some of this is going to be hard. Some of it's going to be easy to nap. It's all raw. Uh, four and five eighths. Three and one eighth. All of these bifaces are raw, but they can be heat treated. You can do it. But I, I would not heat treat the Texas high grade shirts. They don't need it. You might want to heat treat the root beer, but I don't. I don't know. And you might want to heat the Georgia chert. I would heat treat the Georgia chert myself, but uh, don't go higher than three seventy five. Let's see. Uh, almost four and three quarter. Four and five eighths. Yeah, I would try the Georgia chert at three hundred fifty degrees, and if it doesn't nap well, you can go higher. About five inches on that one. All right. So I think that's ten total. All right. <coughs> okay, so rules. A bid in the comments section under one of my pre-populated comments. Yeah, I'm going to put comments in the comments section before you get there. And they'll have the item numbers and stuff. You just bid or reply or comment under one of those comments. <laughs> Uh, find the one you like and reply to that and, and uh, make sure you put in the item number with your reply. I mean, you don't have to, but just in case, if you're like me, you'll push the wrong buttons and your comment won't go in the right spot. So if it's not in the right spot when you comment, at least I know the item number you're trying to bid on. And I don't have to go, what item? I don't have to reply to you and say, what item are you talking about? Put the item number and the and the price you want to pay. You know your bid. All right. Uh, I will like your comment if I see it. Yeah. Pay attention to see if I like your comment. If you don't see any likes on your comment, I might not see it. 
But uh, also give me some time to respond. Like in the beginning of the auction, especially today, I won't be looking at the auction very, very often until the very end. Okay, so you might not have a like on it right away, but just uh, as time rolls on and it gets closer to the end of the auction, I will look at all the comments and I will like them. If you still don't see a like on your comment after or as it's getting close to the time of the end of the auction, then you should be worried. And you just try bidding again or ask me, did you see my comment in the comment section? And that kind of thing. And then I'll say yes or no. Uh, we can resolve it by email too if it gets down to that where I can't see any of your comments. All right. Uh, let's see. Try not to bid at the last minute. Yeah, I'm using YouTube's time tracker and it's not always accurate. It can be up to two minutes off. Please be aware of this. Yeah, this two minutes off thing, sometimes it's up to five minutes off. I've seen that. But uh, yeah, just be aware. I'm using YouTube's time tracker because everyone sees that. Everybody sees. It. So to be fair, so it looks like you bid on time, I use YouTube's time tracker. Now, uh, it may be off and you might get upset that your vid your bid didn't count because YouTube says you're late. But it's not because I think you're late. You know, you know you're late and I know them. You know you're on time and I know you're on time. But YouTube might not record the time correctly. So just be aware of that. This is if you're bidding at the last minute. It doesn't really pertain to you if you bid, you know, early. All right. Shipping is free in the U.S. Uh, international shipping is discounted but not free. Yeah. Uh, I, I will discount the international shipping the same amount that I do in the U.S. Like, let's say I send you a box internationally that's a small flat rate priority box. And normally in the U.S. it's $10.20. I will take off $10.20 from the international shipping. No. Which means after the, I take that off, it's going to be around 20 bucks still to send to Canada for this small priority flat rate box. And it's probably $30 or more to other destinations. All right, so just be aware that shipping is free in the U.S., but it's not free internationally, but it will be discounted. All right, uh, international rates often change. I might need to charge more than this, sometimes not. Sometimes the amount is actually lower than I expect. All right, but mostly it increases without warning. All right, I will provide tracking numbers. I accept PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, checks or money orders, I can also email you an electronic invoice that you can pay with a card. Please note, I cannot charge your credit card on my end. So I don't keep credit card numbers on file. I can't charge your credit card on my end. You'll have to do it on your end. That's a security measure that PayPal is doing these days. My invoices come from PayPal. Okay? Uh, and if you send money through Venmo or Cash App, right, uh, make sure that I tell you what my Venmo name is and my or my Cash App name because I think, especially on Cash App, there's someone named Jack Crafty and it's not me. All right, my Cash App name is going to be Patrick Blank. Okay, uh, just as an example. So make sure I tell you or we get where to send it to straight. I tell you what to, what name is used and that sort of thing, all right? Just don't just automatically send. Even though I say I accept it, don't automatically send unless you know exactly where you're sending to is correct, okay? All right. Winners will be announced starting at 9.01 p.m. Eastern time. 9.01 Eastern, okay? That's when the auction ends, okay? Winners will be announced when the auction ends. Uh, it ends at 8 p.m. Central or 7 Mountain or 6 Pacific. It depends on your time zone. If you're Eastern Time, it ends at 9. If you're Central, it ends at 8. If you're Mountain, it ends at 7. And if you're Pacific, it ends at 6. All right? So it's all different depending on your time zone. So just be aware of that. Okay. I will reply to your winning bid with sold. Thank you. Da, 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 da. This is a cut and paste thing I do for everybody. Uh, if you're new, this is important. You have to send me your information or I don't know who to send it to or where to send it. Okay? You must email me if you win. I can't private message you. I can't remind you. I can't send you a reminder. I can't find you on Facebook and say, hey, you bid and you won. No, you have to contact me if you win. I will announce the winner with this cut and paste reply. And you need to look and see in the comment section if I 
if you won. If this is on your comment as a reply, <laughs> right, you need to send me an email. Okay? I hope that's not confusing because some people get confused by that or it's just too complicated. But it's not complicated. It, just look in the comment section and you'll know if you won or not. Okay? These are my cheat notes. There's a better description down below. Okay. Please look at my previous auctions to see how they work. If you are not able to reply or comment, you will not be able to bid. I can enter your bid for you if you email me. So that's one way around it. Okay. Auction 3J has a demo on how to bid. I used my tablet. Alrighty. So that's it. I hope you like the items. I hope you guys have a very good Christmas day. I hope your weekend is good and your whole week ends up being good. Uh, I will have an auction every Monday. Regardless of the holidays. Yeah. I used to delay my auctions if there was a holiday during the auction. But I don't do it anymore. It's always on Mondays. Okay. Every Monday. All right, that's it, and good luck.